Um, thanks very much. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, when I got the invitation from Stefano and, and, and from Anna, um, I thought it's a great occasion, not just because of uh, a lot of young people, a lot of startups, and uh, um, we're talking about future uh, topics that um, are key for the next 10 years. I'll tell you later why. Probably a lot of you know already um, about the impact on the, of the fashion industry um, on the ocean environment. Um, but I'll probably challenge you how much you know about the ocean and why the ocean is so important for every, every one of us. Um, because at least when I did school, but even if I look at my kids when they're doing the school, these things are not really in their books. And um, I wonder why. Um, probably because uh, the ocean has always been, I don't know, just this big blue uh, uh, something out there on, on freedom, on adventure. Um, but we haven't really explored it. We know more about the moon, we know about more about space, and we know about the ocean. 10% of the ocean has been discovered so far. 10%. And we're having billionaires talking about missions to Mars. Um, I would wonder, you know, if it's maybe worthwhile to dig a bit deeper in the ocean because we don't have much time left and why it's so important. Um, so I'm not sure how much time I have. Um, it used to be an hour, so I prepared like a whole <laughs> presentation, but let's go through it. You'll give me a sign if I have to speed up a little bit. Um, and maybe let's start with a video uh, because I think that's important. Um, and uh, just to give a bit of an introduction. Life began in the ocean, and without the ocean, all life might end. And yet, the oceans are threatened today as they never have been before, inundated every year by enormous quantities of rubbish, paper, wood, metal, and endless tons of plastic, all originating from the land and slowly breaking up into the salt water until they become tiny five millimeter particles known as microplastics. Every year, these particles lead to the death of birds, mammals, turtles, and fish. In one way or another, they damage all marine life, from the minuscule krill to the great predators, eventually affecting us through the food we consume. By 2050, there could be more plastic than fish in the ocean. At the same time, we must face the challenge of climate change. The oceans cover 70% of the Earth's surface. They carry heat from the equator to the poles. They regulate the climate and provide the water that we drink. As the surface temperature of the oceans rises, hurricanes and flooding will occur more frequently. As the amount of greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere increases, more carbon dioxide is absorbed into the water, in turn leading to greater acidity in our oceans. This acidity is a very serious threat to the planet, just as serious as global warming and with unpredictable consequences to the food chain and the well-being of the oceans and even the human race. Protecting the oceans means acting now to safeguard our present and our future. That's why we like the Blue Economy. It focuses on research, innovation and technology to transform our methods to produce, distribute and consume. Innovative solutions in maritime operations, transports and financial instruments. We can meet these challenges. We can create new sustainable work opportunities in a maritime industry worth $3,000 billion a year. But we can only protect what we understand, appreciate and love. This is the aim of ocean literacy. There are researchers, educators, communicators and volunteers. We all have an important task to understand how the oceans influence our lives and how we influence the life of the oceans. To take care of the oceans is to take care of ourselves. Three years ago, or well, four years ago, when we did the, the first uh, international forum um, in Italy, uh, inviting um, 
or kind of institutions from the United Nations, uh, UNESCO, um, heads of, uh, from the scientific community. And it was interesting because Italy, um, being surrounded by, by water, I, I was quite surprised. It was the first forum, two-day forum, international forum they ever did on ocean, on, on the importance of the ocean. So I was a bit surprised. Anyway, um, it brings us to Berlin. And we don't really have much ocean in Berlin, do we? But um, as we know from the video, each, each one of us has an impact on the ocean, directly or indirectly. Everyone has a washing machine, right? We heard about the microfibers. So it brings us back to the textile industry, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's just one of them. Um, so from the, what we're doing in the One Ocean Foundation is we're trying to, uh, one of our missions is uh, we think since there's not much time left to change, um, we don't have the resources to go through policy makers trying to change laws. We think the fastest and quickest way to change things and move things around is through entrepreneurship, talking to companies, trying to help companies in the transformation to sustainability and tell them why, number one, that they have an impact because some of them really don't know that they have an impact on the ocean. Um, while I talk about the ocean, uh, you'll realize quickly it's all interconnected, right? We're talking about climate change. The ocean is just a piece of the puzzle. Um, so climate change has an impact on the pH level, on the increase of the water temperature. I could go through more technical issues on why all this is affecting us on the climate. There's hurricanes, there's droughts. So, you know, uh, um, fashion industry has huge impact on the, on, the, on, the, on the raw materials, on the, on the cotton fields. Cotton fields, you're going back to agriculture, going back to nutrients, getting fed in the, in the soil. It's, it's all interconnected, right? And the sooner we realize that, the better it is. So um, one of the things that we do in the, with the foundation is trying to help the companies, trying to help entrepreneurs, number one, understand their impact. And number two, um, once you know that you have an impact, then you can actually start to change and do something about it, okay? And so um, I'll end up with a presentation. We did a report uh, that was published, a uh, scientific report that was published last year, um, a deep dive on the fashion industry. I'll tell you in a second why. And you can download it. It's uh, open source. Go on the website and you can download it. It's a deep dive on fashion industry and it gives you basically also solutions and what you should concentrate on. Um, and we'll get into this a little bit later on, but um, some of the things probably, as Marisa knows, <laughs> they're probably much easier to apply for startups rather than for companies and brands that have been in this game for the past 20 years. For them, it's hugely difficult to change because of the whole business model, because the way they are set up. So being a startup, you can basically start from scratch. You can choose your suppliers already now. You can use the technology and avoid all these gaps that the big players so far in the industry are struggling with. Um, let's, let's move forward. I mean, uh, this is, um, I'm not going to go into the other areas that we are focusing on on the foundation, but uh, this is just uh, to give an idea on where we started with McKinsey and Stavokoni University and CISIC, which is the Spanish um, sort of scientific um, 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 arm of, 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 the, of the government. We started on a, um, on a report that started out with, um, with two, two areas. One, we, started, we thought, okay, let's try to analyze how the industry has an impact. What impact does the industry have on the ocean? Different industries. Um, so we did a whole map. Um, I think we involved 54 scientists, um, oceanography, um, scientists on their impact on the pressures that the industries are causing on the ocean internationally. And we did a study um, with companies um, on their awareness of their impacts. Okay, so this started off in 2019. In 2020, we had the opportunity to present a study to the United Nations. Um, and this has been rolled out of 1,660 companies. Um, and um, so it went really international. And um, Basically, what we found out was um, when we go into the, the Ocean Disclosure Initiative that was presented last year, at the end of last year, uh, through these reports uh, that the, the actual awareness factor was really low from the companies. 
uh, from the different industries, there were very few industry leaders um, that realized, even in the essence of absence of, of laws or, or regulations, that just because they believed in what they were doing and sustainability was part of their value uh, proposition, they were doing the right things and they were driving actually the innovations. And so the Ocean Disclosure Initiative, what, what did we, what we, we found basically there was a huge gap. Um, and it was a gap on reporting. And I'm sure uh, you all know about ESG and the importance of ESG. It has um, not so much on the startups yet, <laughs> but um, especially if you're a listed company, you have to do your um, sustainability balance sheets. And unfortunately, there's a lot of greenwashing, as we heard the word before. Um, simply because there's no standards um, on specific issues. Now, there, it's tough to do greenwashing on CO2 because you have a mathematic formula that is um, rather easy to apply um, on the different industries. Uh, when you go into the ocean, it becomes really um, quite specific and quite um, difficult because each industry has different impacts. So you can't use the same method of measurement for the industry. Textile industry has a complete different impact than tourism and, 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 and hospitality industry, or oil and gas, or chemical industry, so, or agriculture, fishing. It's all different industries. Different industries have different impacts on the ocean environment. So it's much more complex. And we started to roll out, um, I said, okay, let's face this challenge, and let's try to fill this gap. And so with the help of, of, of our partners um, in this project, we did a deep dive and we looked through 26,000 data points on the different um, frameworks, rating frameworks that exist today from um, carbon disclosure project, uh, CDP, um, to basically um, all, the, all, the, all the different um, frameworks, rating frameworks for the companies that are out there today. And we found that there was not a real standard on SDG 14. SDG 14 is our mission. That's life below water, right, on the global sustainability goals. And so, as long as you don't have a standard um, for a company, it becomes pretty difficult, even if you want to do better than your competition, because you can pretty much write whatever you want, right? So, we need to have standards um, in the industry, and that's where we focused on, on the ODI, we call it Ocean Disclosure Initiative, and the first report we did was fashion industry, uh, because of the impact it has, and, um, and this was published, so you can download the report, uh, this was published uh, last year, and we're just now in the phase of validating it. We've been working with uh, 25 uh, of the biggest brands in the fashion industry, um, they have volunteered to participate in this ODI. Um, we're not putting the results public yet, we're waiting for this. But basically we're just validating the framework, just to tell you basically there's a lot of attention going into this. And why do we believe that this is so important? Because basically, we can keep rolling. Um, you, have, you have two different uh, parameters. From a company perspective, um, the it's important, what you focused on mainly is basically profitability, right? And so, you focus, these are the different, I'll, I'll get into that one, that's an important slide. Just one second, <laughs> okay. Um, um, so, the, what we believe is on the, the, um, to have a standard is important from a, from a company perspective because you want to measure yourself against the competition and it helps your profitability. If I, if I can prove that I'm more sustainable than others, I can put my marketing in there, I can put the products in there, it becomes basically still today, it's an opportunity because you're still amongst the few. We're talking about blue ocean. Okay, it's not really blue ocean anymore, there are some leaders, but you better get in there earlier than later when there's a lot of sharks. <laughs> so it's a good timing. Um, but it's also hugely important for the financial industry. And for the financial industry, not so much because they're looking at profit, they're looking at risk. And when talking about sustainability, for them, sustainability equals risk. Okay, because if I invest my money with your company and you have some blow up because you have some kind of, I don't know, um, you know, child, I mean, we don't have to talk only about the ocean, but child work in India or Bangladesh or whatever, or some, some, some kind of, uh, uh, supplier that you're using, um, has a, 
uh, has, a, has a spill of, um, I don't know, chemicals into some kind of uh, river, even if it's in Asia or somewhere, as soon as it hits the social media, you're in trouble. Okay, so this is basically the impact on the financial industry. That's why the financial industry is so keen on driving the ESG. And this push is getting heavier and heavier. I'm sure you can <laughs> test, testify that. So um, that's why it's not just, this is here to stay, right? So this is not gonna go away. It's gonna get heavier and heavier. And that's why the big companies, that's why there's so much drive on this, on, on the ESG. Uh, to become more sustainable. And I think the, the, the more time that passes by, we'll see that there's less and less room for greenwashing. Because projects like the ODI are starting to eliminate that space for the greenwashing, because you have to produce facts. And I think the consumers are getting smarter. Internet's there, you can inform yourselves. And I think that's also opportunity as we were talking about high tech. With the labeling, you want to know where, you, where, the, where the garment comes from, you want to know where the labeling comes from, you know where it's produced. So just to, to, to give a bit of a vision in the future. Um, this is, uh, we, have a, we have a definition about the blue economy. Maybe it's a, it's a word that you have heard uh, uh, many times. Uh, it's it's um, being talked about more and more because it's one of these areas where also the European Union sees a lot of opportunity, um, economic opportunity. Our definition of blue economy is not just the direct economy from the ocean. So you're talking about ocean mining, you're talking about ocean transportation, maritime and transportation, um, fishing, um, aquaculture. Um, our vision is much broader, and that's where it links me back to the ODI. Our vision is that every industry that has an impact on the ocean is part of the blue economy. Okay, and so you should be part of the blue economy, basically having less impact pot possible on the ocean environment. Let's go to the next slide. Um, this, I think, is interesting because it's, well, you can't really see the colors that much, but I mean, um, if you download the report, you can see it. So what we've done is uh, we looked through all the different industries. So shipbuilding, repair, ports, warehouse, fishing, um, you'll see textile and apparel right here. Um, goes down to agriculture. And we've basically color-coded the different um, KPIs, the different stress factors that exists for the ocean that we've identified per industry. So where you see the dark red, here it looks a bit grayish, uh, it's basically the highest impact, okay? And once you scan this through, that's why I said it's difficult on the ocean because you have to go industry by industry and that's what we're doing right now. So we started with textile. Next industry that we've been tackling is now agriculture and food. After agriculture, food will go probably through um, uh, fishing, aquaculture, um, not sure yet, but by the end of this year, we want to do at least five industries. And so um, um, I think it's important to understand uh, clearly where the biggest challenges are for your industry. Textile apparel, eutrophication is a very red. Content is, is probably the, the toughest one. That's where you have all the microfibers um, and um, also, well, seafood, um, unfortunately, yes, because you can find the, the, the microplastic fibers already in the, in, in the, in, in the small uh, krill. And so marine litter, same thing. Let's keep going. Thank you. This is what I mentioned already. Basically, it's the different frameworks that we've been analyzed um, to get there. Um, I've touched on this. It's the rating mythology and the tomb. So I think um, why we need the, the, the ODI. And, um, and uh, I think I went through this as well. Business risk, investments, companies, financial community. I did this as well. Thank you. <laughs> So let's go, let's go a bit through the numbers. Fashion's impact on our ocean. So um, if you go through this, um, I'm not sure if you can read it, but I'll, I'll walk you through quick. Um, through the different uh, factors that we have, uh, global factors, obviously, population growth, um, increasing in wealth um, and demand. Uh, we mentioned before already in the, in the beginning about the, about the 
the fact that we just, just can't keep growing um, on, on our economies um, the way we have been doing it so far. So we have to change something. Trends like fast fashion obviously don't really help. And um, below are the big pressure points. Um, extreme water usage. Um, when, you, when you look through the textile industry, one of the biggest factors actually is before you even start designing is when you're growing the, 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 the cotton. And you're talking to the, to the scientific community, the cotton actually has become less sustainable than, um, than um, si um, synthetic, um, uh, uh, synthetic how do you call it, threads, what do you call it, Synth synthetic materials, right? Uh, because of the dyeing, because you find in the ocean, unfortunately, already natural fibers from the substance, natural fibers, but they've, but they've been treated so heavily with chemicals that they don't biodegrade anymore. So not sad that you wear a cotton shirt and that actually biodegrades just because it's cotton. So it makes you wonder also what you wear on your skin, right? Um, I think uh, the numbers say that uh, already one, just one washing machine could produce up to 100,000 microfibers. So, okay, all of this ends up in the ocean. 40 percent, at least 40, 50 percent, because there is no filters that really catch that. So there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, chemicals, waterways, contaminations, obviously this goes into lakes, rivers, um, so it's not said that, you know, living um, further from the, from the ocean you, you have less impact. Not the case. Uh, we're just doing now an event in Milan, basically, for, for the World Oceans Day, which is 8th of, of June. And uh, we're bringing the ocean to Milan. It's a bit the same concept like in Berlin, talking to you guys now. Because it's not really, you know, 80% of, of ocean litter comes from the land, from, from the land mass, right? We heard before, 70% of the globe is covered by water. It's all oceans. And we produce 80% of that stuff that ends up there is all coming from land. And don't look at Asia or China. The sea that is worst off globally is Mediterranean because it's closed sea. So it's worst off in fishing, it's worst off on, on pollution, on, on, on microfibers, on plastics. Uh, it's worse off also on climate change because the Mediterranean is increasing two degrees higher by average than any other um, sea on the planet. So, um, anyway, I don't want to get depressed here. So, <laughs> so <laughs> but um, just to tell you, there's a lot of room for improvement, a lot. Um, waste pollution, including microplastics, we talked about it. Energy emissions, unfortunately, textile industry is quite heavy also on energy consumption as we know. So um, the more solutions we can find to, uh, to reduce these pressures, uh, the better it is. Let's, uh, let's, let's go further. As I said before, contaminants is by way the highest uh, impact on, on the fashion industry. So um, with Stefano, um, I had the pleasure to participate already in some other workshops and um, we heard about the importance on technology also on tracking the, um, the different fibers that get into the, into, into the, into the garments um, to really have, a, uh, I don't know, all the, 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 the technical um, descriptions, but to really track down who the suppliers are and the whole supply chain, and the whole value chain is key issue number one. And that's the biggest challenge, I think, in the, in the textile industry is the whole value chain. You have to take a holistic approach. You have to go really f from the first supplier who grows your cotton, if you want to use it, um, all the way to the end. And it shouldn't stop there. You start again. So that's when we go into, into circularity. Um, let's, let's talk um, quick about earth, um, earthification and, and why that's important. Uh, when you think about it, uh, the smallest, um, you can't even see it with the naked eye. Um, 
uh, we're talking about the smallest part of the food chain in the, in the ocean is the plankton and phytoplankton is responsible for producing 50% of the oxygen that we breathe. Okay? So it's not only about the trees. It was part of the first... 50%. 50% of the oxygen that we all breathe comes from the ocean. So Amazon, Amazon is obviously important, right? <laughs> but just one species of phytoplankton, it's the smallest species of phytoplankton, produces 20% of the oxygen more than the Amazon. So small, you don't even see it. Now that is endangered because of climate change, because the temperature of the sea increases, because the sea, the ocean luckily has captured so far 30% of the CO2 emissions that we have produced in excess. Right? But it can't, do, it can't keep doing this forever. Because what happens, capturing the CO2, the water becomes more acid. Okay? With higher acidity, it, uh, what happens is you have all these little like shrimp creatures that need basically, or, or even the, um, the um, corals, for example. Uh, you need a certain pH level in order for corals to grow because they need calcium, okay? Acidity um, is aggressive on, on, on calcium. So there's all these changes, all these little balances in nature. Nature has done it all. It's, we are the issue because we are creating this unbalance. And why am I talking about the importance of phytoplankton is because the smallest piece, it's quite fascinating, the smallest piece, you can't even see it, <coughs> with the naked human eye um, has such an impact on all our lives and who produces that? It needs mainly the whales because of what the whales eat and what comes out of their end <laughs> after they've eaten basically becomes the next source for phytoplankton because it needs these nutrients. So you have the biggest animal on the planet and the smallest tiny piece, and they're all linked together. Which is quite fascinating, I think, even if you're not a scientist. <laughs> okay, so just to make a point on how everything is connected and why that's so important. So, okay, we're talking about the microfibers. Um, um, this was quite an astonishing result, basically, that only 25% of the companies that we have analyzed um, have in place some kind of policy on, uh, on, on shedding of microfiber. And I think this number should grow dramatically because it's one of the biggest issues that we have. So if you look for some blue ocean projects, <laughs> I would concentrate on that one. I think there's going to be a huge demand over the next five years. Um, here you see some numbers. 63% of shrimp in the North Sea contain microfiber. 37% of fish caught at mid-ocean depths in the Northwest and Atlantic have microplastics in the stomach. You can find all the sources of all these numbers in the, in the report. I didn't put them on there because it will take too much, too much time. Okay, let's keep going. Let's go to the, to the end part we had in the, on the, the final statement. Yep. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll speed up. Okay, solutions. Okay. No. <laughs> I like that pie chart. Okay. So basically on the strategic plan planning on the companies itself, um, start doing an assessment. You have to, in order to take action, you have to know where you are and what your impact is. So start with an assessment, set goals and targets. They need to be achievable. My personal recommendation, partner up if you're not, if you don't have anybody in your team, like, um, um, you know, somebody, somebody specialized on sustainability issues. Partner up with some kind of ONG, some kind of, um, could be World Wildlife Fund, could be us, could be, there's a lot of, a lot, lot of us out there. Partner up with them because they are the specialists and they can help you, okay? They can tell you where to go because you might, you might fall in a trap where you say emotionally you would go one direction. But the sign, for example, what, uh, plastic bottles, okay? You talk to the scientific community, they tell you no. Plastic bottles today, if you look at the CO2, 
unfortunately, it's, it's, it's true, are more sustainable than water bottles. Okay, it's our problem to recycle them. Right? It's another issue. But plastic is not the demon. It's what you do with the plastic. So, just another <laughs> word thrown out there. Uh, implementation of activities along value chain, monitoring, um, reporting and feedback. So this has to keep going, this has to be a cycle. There is, I'm not gonna go into all these details, but basically it gives you recommendations from all the research that we've done on what you should actually do in, within your company to bring yourself into a, um, into a really top position when you talk about sustainability in regards to impact on the ocean. Um, one of the key words is transparency. And I think this trend is not going to go away. Companies have to become more transparent. Because it's a demand driven by the scientific community, it's a demand driven by the consumers. And if you want to establish yourself as a company, we know as consumers not everybody is perfect. Okay, but put the skeleton out of your wardrobe. All of these companies have skeletons in the wardrobes. They're just scared to put them out. But it's, it's much better if I tell you, look, I know that I'm not, I've, I haven't been doing the right thing. This is where I am today, but here's my path of where I want to go. Much better. That gives me credibility, rather than me finding out later on. Anyway, um, standard certifications, we're going there as well. Partnerships. <coughs> I don't know how much time, am I, am I over already? One minute. Okay. <laughs> Fast forward. Um, no, I don't want to go there. Um, um, no. One minute, I think I'll, I'll, I'll do a wrap up, um, not going through the slides. I leave you with, with this. Um, we are the generation that cannot say uh, that we haven't known. Right? If I talk to my father, probably he really didn't know. We can't say that we didn't know. We know the facts. Ignorance today is a choice. Unfortunately, we're also the only generation that really can make a change. Because probably we only have 10 years left to really drive that change. So it puts a lot of pressure on us, if you think about it. <laughs> okay? <Yeah>. So <laughs> uh, especially if you have kids around. It changes a bit the, the whole picture. But um, I think I want to leave you this, with this, um, just to, to think about it. There's not much time left. And even if we have emergencies like COVID or the war or anything, all that's, this is not going to go away. This is going to get worse by the year, by the day. So the more of us that somehow take action, take the leadership, we talked about leadership before, be the leader of yourself. Try to drive some change. The problem for us, human beings, us human beings, including me, we're too much driven by habits. And it's the biggest thing, the biggest trouble probably to change. But if we want to have somehow a future as human race, we better change our habits really fast. So that's a call for action. <laughs> Thank you.